So I have a lot of wooden molding planes, it's a few regular hand planes. I've got wooden coffin planes for roughing out material and stuff like that. I've even got a coffin plane that's been set up to be a smoothing plane which takes absolutely fine shavings and works great. I've even got this huge joiner that I picked up many years ago and I don't use it a lot but I use it on a few projects and it works really well. This joiner is a little bit heavier than my other metal joiners that I have and I really just like the feel of this. Being able to have a bigger, wider surface to put your hands on and I don't know, I like the wooden plane better. However, one of the planes that I don't have is a wooden jack plane. Today I got one in the mail and I figured it would be a good restoration video. So here it is, here is the little wooden jack plane. This is in really good condition, has a slight crack right in the front. It's a little dinged up from hammer marks, but not that bad. The blade's in fairly decent condition. It looks like somebody kind of went over it with a file real quick though, so we're gonna have to straighten that out. It does have a maker's mark up here on the front, but I can't see that right now. I'm gonna be cleaning this up, getting the iron back into great shape, and getting this put into the tool chest to be ready to use. darkened up quite a bit compared to what it was like before and another thing that you can notice is that it's also already dry there's no I mean you got some that's sitting up here but this is already seeped in so that means that you want to go ahead and add some more onto it and you want to do that a couple times until it doesn't really seep in anymore and then you know that the plane has a good amount of saturation in it so the iron and the chip breaker aren't in that bad of condition, they're a little bit rusty. The cutting edge of the iron, however, looks like it could be a little bit difficult to try to redo. It's got a lot of wear and it's got like a little concave area right there in the middle. But we're going to try to work with it because as you can see there's not much iron left of this. I mean it's got plenty of use, but I don't want to take it down to where it's right there. So I'm going to try to get away with sharpening it the best I can. I'm going to take it onto some rough sandpaper first and try to see what we've got. And then I'm going to go ahead and get out my x massis stones and get this really sharp. So I just got done getting this iron cleaned up. And there was so much rust on it and just buildup of the gunk and debris that I had to take it over to the wire wheel. Now I know that's not a real good thing that people like to hear, but there was so much buildup, I didn't want to use sandpaper and really tear the iron apart. So I went and used the wire wheel, knocked off the rust, came back with some scotch brite and cleaned it up. Now, before I had even touched this to the wire wheel, I couldn't see anything on it, and then as I started getting near the top, I found out this is an Ohio tool company jack plane. I mean, I knew there was a little maker's mark on there, but it wasn't really ed uh, legible. And now the iron says Ohio tool company. I mean, how awesome is that? So, so I knocked off all the rust on the wire wheel, and I found out it was uh, actually a pretty good named uh, jack plane. 
So let's go ahead and get this iron cleaned up even more, get it sharpened, and we'll see if we can take that little concave out of there, see what we can do. So to start with, I've got my iron. I put some permanent marker on there. I've got a really rough grit sandpaper right here, and I'm just going to work it and see where it's cutting, where, what I need to change about it so that I can get the correct bevel on there. Okay, so I can see that the middle, of course, is not getting cut by any of the sandpaper. And this little corner is not as well as well as that front leading edge. So I'm just going to keep on working it down and see if I can get rid of all that. This had a really bad bevel. It was really crooked. And this right side, or this side over here was a lot longer. And I just didn't like it. So I went ahead and pulled out this little jig right here that I've had for quite a while and I've marked it up to the 25 degree mark which is pretty consistent to where it was and I've just been working on it and it's been getting a lot of that concave part away and also straightening up that front edge. It wore away this side a lot and now we're starting to see wear on this side over here. So I've worked it quite a bit and there's really deep scratches on here and this one part that's really inset and I don't want to go too much deeper and wear away a bunch of material the leading edge is all good from about here forward is all nice and straight it's all one uh, straight line bevel I've got a somewhat sharp edge already I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my wet stones and go ahead and start trying to finish this up <laughs> Now the next step I'm going to do is go ahead and work on the chip breaker a little bit. I want to kind of make sure that this edge right here is going to be cleaned up and this will be what's pushing against the iron. So you want a nice clean surface for the, the two pieces to meet. So now I've got the plane back over here. I've got the wedge over here. I've got the uh, chip breaker and the iron put back together. I've got the chip breaker sitting less than an eighth of an inch up off the edge it's just to remove all the little pieces of wood that you tear up and before I do anything else I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and put a little bit of paste wax on the bottom just to help with it sliding along the wood not a lot I'm not even digging any out of there this is just what was on the rag. I'm just smoothing it out on there. And look how dark the iron got, or the plane, after it's been maybe an hour and I just picked it up. I haven't even wiped any of the oil off of there. It's just, it soaked everything in. So the next thing you want to do is go ahead and just slide your iron in. And then your wedge. And it's done. Now you just want to go ahead and getting the iron set can be some work. 
but after you do it a couple times, you, you'll get the hang of it. I'm going to go ahead and get out a piece of a 2x4 and work with it and see if I can get this iron set. video.